Do you own a V-wheel workbee and fancy linear rails? Are you in the market for an awesome CNC machine? In this video, I'm gonna show you how I turned my workbee from this into this. A linear rail, steel plates, super rigid, awesome beast of a CNC. Let's do it. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Lee and I'm a DIY electric skateboard builder. And part of being a DIY electric skateboard builder is designing, prototyping, iterating, making lots of different parts. Now, for a few years now, I've had the CNC machine and during lockdown 2020 last year, I did purchase an Oosnest Workbee CNC machine and I did build it and I did review it on this channel. So if you're interested in watching that video, it'll be, I think it's up there. Anyway, yeah. And since then, I have been using my Workbee a lot. Like really, a lot. I've cut everything from wood to plastics to aluminium, foam, even stainless steel. But that was a bit of a disaster and we don't really talk about that. Now I would say in the last 14, 15 months or so that I've had the machine, I have got really used to working with it and know my way around it. And not only that, also all of the cam side of Fusion 360, which is a super powerful tool. And I've had a blast with it, but I have found some things that I didn't like about the machine. It's only when you start using something like this, you realize how things could be improved. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. I think the Workbeat is an amazing machine. It's a low cost, super capable entry into the world of CNC machining but nothing's perfect and there are some things that could be improved with the machine. First of all, everyone says it and it's a bit of a meme, but the V-wheel system, I believe in 2021 is a little bit antiquated and it definitely has its limitations. I can't count how many times I've been on the machine and had to adjust those V-wheels to tighten them up and stop as much slop in the machine as possible. And some of the eccentric nuts are really difficult to get to. The ones on the Y axis are actually at the bottom of the machine and are virtually impossible to get to. I think if you've got a spanner and you bend it or something like that, you can adjust them, but out of the box, that's not a great way to do things. The other thing I don't like about the machine is how much flex it has. Now, it is fairly rigid. If you were cutting wood, you'd never have any problems. You'd probably never notice any issues at all. But cutting metals, you start to see some issues with the rigidity of the machine, particularly the flex around the X axis. If you get the Z and you start moving it, you can feel the whole thing twisting. Now, when you're cutting sort of harder materials, that is a problem. And you will notice when you cut with the machine that it cuts much better in certain directions than it does others. And that's probably because of the flex in the machine. And the third and final thing that I don't like about the Workbee is the spoil board support systems. Now I can sort of see why they are required. It helps keep the machine a bit more rigid and it gives you somewhere to bolt your spoil board down to. Now, the amount of times I've screwed some stock into my spoil board and I've hit the um, support beams and not realizing it's lifted the stock up on one corner it's caused some problems especially after you've already surfaced your spoil board you put that piece of work on there and now it's not in tram anymore that's a bit of a problem now there are a couple of other things about my machine that i don't like and i want to improve that aren't to do with the work bee first of all the router has got to go for a spindle it's about time in fact the dewalt router that is on my machine is actually dead. The bearings have gone on it and it runs super, super hot and it gets the end mills hot, which then gets the stock hot when I'm cutting aluminium. That's a problem. So that's got to go. And also I wanted to include some chip evacuation whilst I was there. So I went in search on the internet and I found this company called Ratrig. Now Ratrig are a company based out of South Portugal and they make uh, not only an upgrade for the work, be sort of a bolt on upgrade, but they also do a standalone machine as well called the Killer Bee, the Rat Rig Killer Bee. And with the Killer Bee, Rat Rig aim to vastly improve on the sort of work beat system. Not only do they add linear rails in favor of the V wheels, they also stiffen up the whole machine by using steel instead of aluminium gantry plates, and they improve the machine in lots of different ways. Now, I actually got in contact with Rat Rig myself and asked them if they fancied working together on this video, and they were only too happy to work with me. And they have provided this Killer Bee upgrade to my work beat for free. So you have to take what I say here with a pinch of salt naturally, 
However, if you know my channel, you'll know that I basically just say how I feel and I talk the truth and it doesn't really matter whether somebody's giving me something for free or not. But if you don't, you know, if you're not familiar with my channel, just take that into account, yeah. So my deal with Ratrig is they were to send me an upgrade for my work bee into, which sort of turns it into a killer bee. And in return, I would produce a video, but not only produce a video, I would go through the build and provide feedback to them because I'm sort of one of the first people to get one. I would provide feedback to them in areas that they could improve it. Now, there were a couple of little things along the way, and these have been fed back to Ratrig, and they were only too happy. They're super nice people, only too happy to hear the feedback, and they're gonna implement the things that I've said to them in the kits going forward, which is super cool. So with all that said, I did receive the kit a couple of months ago, and I'm gonna show you in this video how I turned my boring old work bee into a linear rail beast. Now the Rat Rig Killer Bee upgrade comes in two boxes, a cubic one and a long one. And they were delivered really quickly and from Portugal to my door, I can't remember what the exact time was, but it was super quick. And there was 110 pounds, I think, customs fee to pay, which I paid myself. Now, looking at the boxes and opening that first cubic boxes, it sort of really reminded me of the joy I felt when I opened the boxes for the work beat and having all the bits in there. It's super, super cool. So looking in the box, I found some new drag chains, a big bag of bolts, nuts, fixings that was all labeled up into their individual packets, a load of new 3D printed parts in this cardboard box, and these new really, really weighty steel gantry plates. I was actually taken aback by how heavy these things are. And they were just, you can just tell, they're just so much more solid than the aluminium ones that come on the work bee. Now in the long box is the linear rails and you have two for each beam. So for the Y axis you have four, for the X you have two, and for the Z you have two. So you've got a total of eight linear rails. So with all of these parts spread out in front of me and a few ideas running around my head and how I was gonna tackle this upgrade, I decided it was time to remove the work bee from its enclosure and disassemble it. So the first thing I did is I decided to remove the spoil boards, hoover out my enclosure. There was a lot of dust and swarf and all kinds of bits and pieces in there. Got rid of all of that, unbolted the machine from the floor and just pulled it out by myself and put it on the workbench. I wanted to further assess on how I was gonna do this because at the time of making this video, there are no instructions on the Rat Rig website for how to sort of do the upgrade to an original work bee. There are full um, upgrades in that, is it do, Dozu format that they have on, on these sort of things, full upgrades through that system on how to build it if you buy the machine direct from them and you build up the, the killer bee all by itself. But if you're doing an upgrade, at the time of making this video, there wasn't any instructions on there. So I had to think about how to do it. Now, I will say that actually the instructions for building the machine were pretty much exactly what I needed because in the end, you strip the machine right down anyway. So you can follow those instructions and that's exactly what I ended up doing. Obviously, we will be reusing some of the old workbee parts in combination with the new rat rig killer bee parts to produce a sort of new and improved final machine. So I decided to remove the spoil board supports first as I thought that would be a good place to start. And then I carefully removed the Y beams by unscrewing the lead screws from the Y plate nut blocks. Once that was done, it was time to remove the Y plates themselves before sliding the Z assembly off the X beam. It was at this point that I noticed one of my Y plates was actually bent. Now I'm trying to show you on camera here that it's bent. I don't know if it's coming out very well. What I should have done is put like a steel rule against it. But yeah, it's bent in sort of two planes. And yeah, I was really surprised about that. Obviously one of the main selling features of this upgrade kit is removing all of those aluminium plates and replacing them with steel, which vastly increase the rigidity of the machine. After that, I disassembled the Z assembly and I was basically left with a load of parts ready to start building up again. I decided to store everything back in the enclosure and rebuild the machine on my workbench. Now we're on to the fun part, the reassembly. assembly 
So following the instructions, the first thing I did is I attached the nut blocks to all of the various plates. And it's here you see another one of the upgrades over the old work bee. The work bee has the nut blocks standing on spacers whereas the killer bee has them bolted directly to the plates, increasing rigidity. After adjusting the nut block tension, it was on to preparing the linear rails. Now I've got to admit guys, this is the most tedious part of the assembly. You've got to get all of the bolts and the T-nuts into the linear rails, ready to bolt them to the beams. It's super tedious, it takes ages, but I just put some music on, cracked on, and after, I don't know, probably an hour, I had it all done and ready to assemble. Now the rat rig instructions do not say this, but I think personally this is a good idea. I think a drop of retaining compound on these bolts would be a good idea. I did actually have one come out after I had finished the machine and was using it and it stopped the Y axis moving because it sort of jammed in with the linear rail. There was no damage caused, but it did make me think that maybe these bolts should have a drop of, of Loctite or other retaining compound on them to sort of help them stay in. Actually assembling the rails onto the beams isn't hard. You have this 3D printed tool that RatRig provide in the kit and you go along and bolt one rail up. Then you bolt one of the steel axi plates to the linear rails and you go along in a certain way, bolting the rails down as you go. And what this leaves you with is sort of a super smooth sliding action on the linear rails. Now you do need to take really good care here this is probably one of the most crucial parts to get right on this whole build take your time get them all seated properly get the smooth motion if it isn't smooth loosen them off and start again that's what i had to do a couple of times but in the end i had all smooth motion on all of the uh, linear rails and once you're finished you're left with these beautiful assemblies don't they look amazing i was super hyped at this point couldn't wait to build the machine next up is attaching the newly constructed Z assembly onto the X axis, and you do this by bolting two steel plates together with M6 bolts and nuts. It's super rigid and it's a great improvement over the old V wheel system. It's super, super rigid, guys. I was really impressed with this. It's one of the areas that I think needed to be looked at the most on the work bee. And Rat Rig have obviously thought about this a lot. And two steel plates go together, there's no, there's not going to be any flex in them at all. Once that's done, you attach this XZ uh, sub-assembly to the Y plates. Now this is quite difficult to do. In the instructions, it says get a helper. I didn't have any helpers, so I used this polystyrene uh, thing to sort of wedge the X beam up whilst I bolted it in. Not the easiest thing to do if you've got some wooden blocks or something, that would help. If you've got a helper, even better. Now is a good time to mention that RatRig only use full cap head bolts on all of their kit. The work bee does use a lot of low profile headed bolts even where they don't need to be used. I don't know why, but with the proper um, full size head, you can get a lot more torque on the bolts with confidence and sort of bolt it all together much more rigid. And then after that, I put the beam end caps on, stuck the Y cross braces on the front and the back, and it was on to assembling the motors and the lead screws. Now this is another area where RatRig have improved the design. They've got rid of the old bearings and they use these thrust bearings now. Uh, you wind on this nut to tension the whole system up, screw in the grub screw on the nut and it holds it all super tense, much nicer than the old sort of drop-in bearings that the work be used. Once that was done, I added the cable tracks, no issue with the X one, the Y one, um, actually the, the killer bee has all the cables going in the opposite direction to what the work bee does. So I had to reverse the way that the cable track ran. Now that meant that the included brackets weren't perfect. I did feed this back to rat rig, who uh, are going to sort that out and they're going to, they, they said they were going to change the brackets either so that you could use them bidirectionally or they were going to include them in the upgrade kits to go the opposite way around. I don't know, but I fed that back to Rat Rig. You've got to remember this is kind of like an early access version that I had here. And part of the deal was to find any little nuances like this with the upgrades and feed it back. Now with all of the mechanical stuff out the way, it was time to move on to the electronics assembly. So the kit as standard from RatRig includes these open builds limit switches. Now these are undoubtedly much better than the ones that come on the work bee. They have some filtering in there to prevent noise and things like that. I haven't had any problems with the original work bee ones, but these do work with the Duet 2. I did confirm that by running two wires here on the outside um, pins, and that does allow the switch to operate in a normally open manner i think it was normally open i can't remember which way around but it does allow the switch to work 
and Ratrig did include brackets to install these on my machine. Now, although these are really nice limit switches, I actually wasn't a fan of the way the Killer B has the X limit switch on the left. That would mean that the, the machine would have to park back left and it's set up to park back right as standard. So I wanted to try and retain that feature. I did have a look around on everyone's favorite worst website, Thingiverse, and I found a guy called Raymond that had made some parts to do just exactly this. He'd tread, he trod on this path just before me and he'd made some brackets to allow you to fit the old Workbee two wire switches onto the Killer Bee. Now I did print these off and I did try them, but there was a couple of areas that I wanted to improve on, so I made my own. I also decided that I wanted to print all of the accessories in this sort of magenta uh, PLA, so I would have like a black and magenta themed machine, which I think has turned out really, really nicely. So I made a bracket for the X limit switch with some wiring management. I made another one for the Y, and I did steal the idea from Raymond to have an arm that hits the limit switch, which is on the Z axis. Now, having the Z axis limit switch in the place it is now is amazing. The one on the work B is in a terrible, terrible location. So to move that out is a really nice upgrade. Now, I do want to say at this point that you don't have to print any parts at all yourself. All the things needed to make the machine work are included with a kit. I have the luxury of a 3D printer, so I can design parts and, and customize things as I go. And that's basically what I wanted to do. If you do want any of my parts, there will be a link in the description where you can go and find all those things on Thingiverse, download them and use them in your build if you want to. Next up, it was time to think about putting the duet on the back of the machine. Now, as standard on the work bee, I was never a fan of it being open as it is. It's just getting full of dust all the time. In fact, mine was absolutely gopping when I took it off. So I set about looking for an enclosure. And I did find this awesome one by a guy called Chris Giletti on Thingiverse. Not only does that this allow you to completely enclose the duet, it also allows you to upgrade the fans to 40 millimeters. When you when you've got the work beat in an enclosure, it can get quite warm in there. So that was also a really nice upgrade. I purchased these LED 40 millimeter fans off of eBay. I snipped the connectors off, joined it to the existing wiring harness and fitted them into the case, which I printed in black um, PETG. Once that was done, I bolted the case to the back of the X beam and screwed the duet in there. Once I'd cabled everything up, I did fire everything up just to check that the fans are working in a push pull uh, fashion and not only that just to test all of the limit switches and everything you really need to go through that um, regime where you test all the limit switches and all the axes move in the right directions make sure that as your carriages approach the limit stop that they're gonna touch the switch before they sort of get jammed or hit anything else all that stuff really important to do so make sure you do that guys once that was done i designed and printed this bracket so that i could attach an air nozzle to the side of the z beam and I also printed these huge black brackets in PTG to attach the spindle to the machine. I did buy one metal bracket, um, but it's always best to have two. And instead of buying another metal one, I just printed a plastic one. Again, if you have a 60 millimeter spindle like me and you want this bracket, the link to the files is in the description. Next, I retired my old router and this is what I was left with, quite a collection of parts. Now, I do have some of the bits here. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with these yet. It would be nice to build like a little mini mill or a camera slider or something like that, I don't know. Now, I did actually have to get my better half to help me lift the machine back into the enclosure. It is so much heavier with all the steel on here than when I pulled it out, which is obviously going to be amazing for keeping it nice and rigid. Now, one of the things I said at the start of the video that I wanted to do is I want to get rid of the spoil board supports. So I didn't put these back onto the machine. I just bolted it directly to the floor of my enclosure. And then I got three sheets of MDF that I cut on the track saw and bolted those to the same surface that the machine is bolted onto. This leaves me with a nice surface in which to attach a spoil board. No screws are gonna hit metal and adjust that for me. I put a spoil board on there, surfaced it, and it's been absolutely fine. I have made some parts with this machine, and let me tell you guys, it cuts so much more confidently than the old one. You can run higher speeds, you can run deeper depths of cut and the whole thing is super rigid. It's really, really nice. It makes a huge difference and it is definitely worth the upgrade. So what has it been like to work with Rat Rig? Well, I wanna take this opportunity to say it's been amazing. The guys have been super chilled out. They've had absolutely no problems with the protracted amount of time it's taken me to get this video out. 
They've listened to all the feedback that I wanted to send them. They've been really enthusiastic about the whole thing. So yeah, it's been amazing. The machine is fantastic and I love it even more than I did before. So if you are in the market for a CNC machine, I would strongly suggest that you check out the Rat Rig Killer Bee. Linear rails are the future, V wheels are the past. Get yourself a really nice machine from the get go and not have to go through the upgrade that I did.